In this tutorial today, I will review some random EGs and give you some tips how to clean up the EGs and for an optimal interpretation of the recording. So let's get started with our first sample here. So what I want you to do with each of these samples that I present today is try to pause the video and try to see if you're able to identify specific abnormalities or if everything is normal, just say so that this is normal EG and see if you can write your own report before looking at the interpretation that I'm going to provide you here. For those of you who are new to the EG world, just a very brief introduction. Channels, so FP1, F3 is one channel, F3, C3 is one channel and so forth. So channels that end with an odd number are recording from the left side of the brain channels that end with an even number are recording from the right side of the brain. The alphabets before the numbers tell you the location. So FP is frontopolar, F is frontal, C is central, P is parietal, O is occipital. So just a quick review that P3 O1 because it is P and O so recording from parietal occipital head region and since this channel ends with an odd number this is recording from the left parietal occipital head region. Likewise, P4, O2, it ends with an even number, so it is recording from the right parietal head region. As with anything in neurology, its EEG is just an extension of the neurological examination. What I want you to do is just compare the first four channels with the next four channels and see if you're able to identify any differences. So pause the video here, Try to see if you're able to identify what is the difference between the first four versus the next four channels. Okay, what I'll do is try to make it a little easier for you. I'm going to go to the next slide where I've only taken eight channels. Instead of the 16 channels or 20 channels that are displayed over here, I've only taken the eight channels. Now it must be a little easier for you to compare the left side and the right side. So on the left side, let's start with P3, O1. You can see a posterior dominant alpha rhythm here. But when you're looking at P4, O2, you're seeing slow frequencies with superimposed fast activity. Let's move on to C3, P3. You're still seeing some alpha rhythm right here and you're seeing prominent delta activity. And the delta activity here is not exactly the same as delta activity here, so there is difference in the delta that we see so it has different morphology that's why we call it polymorphic delta activity so there is some polymorphic delta and polymorphic theta polymorphic means different more uh, more than one morphology more than one shape if you look at the very first channel now fp1 f3 and compare it with fp2 f4 you're seeing some eye blink artifacts. So this is an eye blink, this is an eye blink, this is the eye blink, with a difference that on the left side, there is possibly some muscle and some more beta activity on the left side. So there is a clear difference between the first four channels here and the next four channels here. There is a uh, continuous polymorphic delta and theta slow activity on the right side. The alpha rhythm is not clearly seen on the right side as you've seen it on the left side. So with continuous persistent slowing on the right side, you wonder if there is any kind of a structural abnormality such as a stroke, such as a brain tumor, such as any kind of encephalomalacia. And you can also see asymmetric slowing immediately following an electrographic or a clinical seizure and which could be post-ictal slowing. So this is basically try to make your own interpretations when you look at these EGs. Let's pick up another sample. So this is another EG. So how would you try to clean up this EG in order to be able to uh, properly define it? So the first four channels are left parasagittal contacts. Next four channels are right parasagittal contacts. How can you make this EG look a little neater? Uh, so what I've done here in the next uh, slide here, I've cut down the gain. Cut down the gain meaning that there is less overlap between channels. So you see more overlap over here. If you compare this channel is overlapping with this channel here, you see this, these channels are overlapping. To get a neater appearance, you can cut it down and which we've done over here. 
the green lines are separated by one seconds approximately and what you're seeing on this page is you're seeing a lot of delta activity so this is slow activity that you see here you're also looking at some of what are called triphasic waves so this over here what i'm highlighting here these are triphasic waves do not confuse those with eye blink artifact with eye blink artifact you will have a maximal amplitude in the frontopolar contact so in fp1 and fp2 and as you go more posteriorly there is a very sharp sharp drop in the amplitude but if you look over here i mean let's specifically look over here you have this kind of a three phases to it so a triphasic wave and the drop in amplitude is not very rapid uh, and you can see this going into f4 c4 you even see that in c4 p4 so this is something that is called a triphasic wave if you see triphasic waves on an eg in the setting of a slowing of the background you consider a few possibilities so if that is a question for your royal college exam or one of your eg exams conditions that give you triphasic waves on the eg include hepatic encephalopathy uremic encephalopathy you can see it with co2 retention you can see it with lithium toxicity you can see it with myxedema coma you can see it with anoxic brain injury so those are the six conditions that you should remember to mention uh, if you are examined on that uh, part of the eg let's look at another uh, random sample here so first question to ask yourself is what is the state of the patient is this patient awake is this patient asleep and in order to do that you'll have to properly analyze the cg and describe the findings that you see in front of you so green lines are separated by one second odd numbers are recording from the left side even numbers are recording from the right side what we see is a relatively low amplitude delta activity with superimposed fast activity fast activity part of it could be from beta activity with, uh, and part of it could be some muscle as we see over here uh, in order to differentiate between physiological slowing and pathological slowing you want to stimulate the patient if a person was just asleep and you stimulate the patient you should revert back to uh, faster frequencies but if in a if a patient is in a state of coma you don't always expect to go back to a posterior dominant alpha rhythm let's look another sample here so you get presented with this eeg and you're sort of at a loss where to start so a very good way to look at the CEG is try to clean it up as much as you can try to take a piece of paper try to write the different frequencies that you see here you're looking at a lot of fast frequencies but all the frequencies do not completely look alike let's go to the last channel CZPZ and you see this fast frequency here so this is something that is called a 60 cycle artifact that comes from electrical outlet if you use a notch filter you can get rid of it so let's try try to start cleaning up this eg as much as we can so we use a notch filter we use a 60 cycle uh, filter and we get rid of that 60 cycle artifact now what's next you are able to see the ecg here you uh, if if you look at the last two channels that you see this so sort of a sharp kind of an activity that occurs every second and a half to two seconds these sharp sharp waves that occur every so often and to further clean up this eeg what we will do here is we'll use a 30 hertz high frequency filter we get rid of some of the fast frequencies and you see that these sharp waves are not just in the last two channels these in fact go all the way up from anterior to posterior and these are generalized these have some kind of a periodic periodicity and these are sharp in morphology so you these are previously called generalized periodic epileptiform discharges or now you can also call them generalized periodic discharges so this is a pattern that emerges after you do some cleaning up of the eg so that is something to remember and uh, okay let's go back to that eg something to remember to try to clean up the eg as much as you can but be aware that sometimes using filters can make a normal slow wave appear sharp in morphology so you have to be comfortable with the different types of filters before you call anything abnormal 
Okay, let's look at another sample here. So we are looking at this uh, sample of EEG and I want you to pause here and try to see if you can determine the state of this uh, this page. When I say state, try to uh, try to say whether this is while the patient is awake or the patient is asleep. So pause here, try to answer that question and then you can come back. What we see here is we are seeing a posterior dominant alpha rhythm. Posterior dominant because parietal occipital head regions show you which are in the back of the head show you the alpha rhythm. You, if you count here, I mean it's already mentioned over here 9 to 10 hertz but if you count you will see 9 hertz, 9 uh, cycles in between those two green lines. You can also see a lot of beta activity. Beta activity can be related to high levels of anxiety. If somebody has had a lot of caffeine, caffeinated drinks, they can get a lot of beta activity. Medications that cause beta activity include benzodiazepines, barbiturates such as phenobarbital will cause a lot of beta activity. Among the benzodiazepines, clonazepam tends to cause a lot of beta activity. Some of the antidepressants, what we call SSRIs, they can cause an increase in beta activity. So this is an awake EEG with posterior dominant alpha rhythm with a bit excess uh, beta activity. Overall, this looks like a normal EEG. Let's look at another sample here. And the same question again, is this somebody who's awake or this is somebody who's asleep? Pause the EEG here, try to answer that question. You can resume the EEG now if you have your answer. What we see here, if you look carefully, that number one, you do not see a posterior dominant alpha rhythm. If you look at P3 O1 or P4 O2, you do not see an alpha rhythm. Compare it with the previous EEG, you see this alpha rhythm here. And you don't see the alpha rhythm here. What you're seeing here, some of it mixed in the background is what we call sleep spindles. Presence of sleep spindles tells you that this is stage two sleep. Something else that jumps out at me are these sharp waves with what with appear what appears like a face reversal at f8 t4 when you see a sharp wave it's important to consider looking it at with another montage so we go to an average reference montage same eg same page same time and now we are looking at an average reference montage and you see these sharp waves so compare this these sharp waves that you're looking at a bipolar montage and compare it with an average reference montage and you see these sharp waves right here. So F8, T4, if you see sharp waves like this, you call them epileptiform discharges and presence of epileptiform discharges tells you that this person is at a higher risk of having seizures from the right temporal head region. What you see here at F7, T3, these are also sharp waves, but I'm not absolutely certain whether this is just a mixture of frequencies or an actual epileptiform discharge. You'll need to look at more of the sample before making that conclusion. And the same EG, I've cut down the gain, I've cut down the amplitude so that there is less crossing between channels and you can see a clear right temporal sharp wave. Let's look at another sample here. So now you come across this EG. Now I want you to again pause and try to think what are the different maneuvers you will do to clean up this EG to make it a little more readable. So first of all, you can see the 60 cycle artifact in P402 and T602. Use a notch filter as we do here and get rid of the 60 cycle artifact. You're seeing a lot of delta activity. You're seeing some faster frequencies riding on the delta activity you're again seeing some triphasic waves here. But there is a lot of crossing between the channels. This channel crosses with this channel. Oh, when I say crossing between channels, I mean overlap between different channels. So cut down the gain, cut down the gain, and you will see that there is less crossing here, and you're seeing delta activity. All the delta activity is not necessarily of the same shape, so you're seeing polymorphic delta activity. All the theta activity that you see is not the same shape. So you're seeing polymorphic theta activity. You're also seeing some triphasic waves. And uh, what we will do next is we will compress the CG. So when you see certain patterns, and it's not very obvious in 8 to 10 seconds of the recording, you can in the, 
instead of having 30 millimeters between two green lines, you can try to compress it and have 15 millimeters between two lines. So I'll compress the CG and this is what you see here. And the triphasic waves become a little bit more obvious. So you're seeing diffuse generalized slowing with polymorphic delta and, and theta activity seen distributed between the two hemispheres and you also see triphasic waves uh, and so you know the causes for triphasic waves you have to think about hepatic encephalopathy you have to think about uremic encephalopathy you have to think about co2 retention you have to think about myxedema coma lithium toxicity and oxic brain injury and in fact it's not very specific to one etiology you can see triphasic waves in more than a few etiologies but if that is an exam question make sure you do not miss those five or six that i mentioned starting with hepatic encephalopathy so this is basically the end of the tutorial today i hope you've learned a few extra things so things to remember a few highlights that we discussed is try to clean up that eeg try to use a 60 cycle artifact to get rid of the electrical artifact 60 cycle filter to get you rid of the electrical artifact you can cut down the gain so there is not a whole lot of uh, crossing between different channels not a whole lot of overlap between different channels and you can carefully use some high frequency filters to get rid of the background noise so you can actually have a look at the signal so that's pretty much it for today Thank you for attention and I hope to have another tutorial in not too far uh, in the near future. Thank you so much.